Thank you. Thank you. Well, hi. Hi. Good afternoon. Thank you, David, the one with the eternal suntan. Where do you buy that spray from? Same place I get my hairspray, I bet. Huh? It's so nice to be with you again. When somebody asks me what's the nicest thing that could ever happen to you in this world, it is, in fact, to invest your time to visit with, to be with, to hold hands with, to walk down the pathway of success with winners. That's what you are. You are winners. And Starlight clearly loves you deeply. Last time in Orlando, Fun City, USA. And today in Nashville. I love Nashville. In fact, I worked in this very room last week. I have to admit to you, it didn't look anything like this. There were some 2,000 technology experts here in the room, had no color, no life, no excitement. So it's worth it being with you just to look at the scenery and the view and see the touch of Hollywood and everything that, that you do. And it's much more worthwhile to be with you because of who you are and what you believe in and where I know in my heart you are headed. I love Nashville for lots of reasons. Now, I'm not a country music fan, but I love to listen to country music. And just coming in from the airport, right about 11.30 this morning, I heard a couple of songs, and, and I, and I got to tell you what they said. They were both love songs. It seems like every country song is a love song. One of them said, you stole my heart, and you stumped that sucker flat. <laughs> Now, you know, for a Lebanese boy, that doesn't sound like much of a love song to me. And the other song I thought was even greater was some woman who was lamenting the fact that her lover had done her in. And she said, I'm in the gutter now, but if I go back to you, that'll be a step down. <laughs> oh, my. You remember last time we visited, I uh, shared with you that I learned English from scratch. Remember that? I said I took three by five cards. Inch by inch life, in fact, is a cinch. I took three by five cards, wrote ten English ones on the card. Today, I'll memorize those words. Tomorrow, another three by five card, ten more English words. Memorize those as I reviewed yesterday's ten words. The next day, the same story over and over. And if you recall, I said to you, I gave myself Sunday off because I'm a Methodist. And we Methodists have to reintroduce ourselves to God at least once a week. We are not like Baptists. We have no guaranteed passage. People say to me, Nito, why are you always picking on the Baptists? It's simple. You make a Baptist man, he'll pray for you. You make a Presbyterian mad, he'll tell you to go to hell. <laughs> so there you go. You got to pick on the ones that will be willing to pray for you. Well, I'm very delighted to be with you here this afternoon. In the short time that we have together, we have, in fact, prepared a handout uh, called How to Be a Great Communicator, which, incidentally, is the title of one of my newest books. It was on the Book of the Month Club selection and Money Magazine's Book of the Month Club selection both this year. One of a dozen books or plus that I've written that are active today. And uh, it's a very, very important subject to me, and I'll tell you why in just a moment. But I'm delighted to be with you here today because when you come in this room, you definitely see Steve Goldberg's touch 25 years on Hollywood shows and all the technology here and all the beauty in the room and all the excitement on the stage and all the high-tech, high-tech, high-touch and people who really want to get real, get well, and help other people get their dreams fulfilled in life because of the products that you sell. When you have great products and you have a great business plan, which is precisely what Starlight International provides for each of us, then you really have it made. And when you live in North America, you are on your way to the finest of banks. So 
get real because you're getting well really fast. Let me tell you this, the 21st century is going to be unforgiving, unforgiving for the man or woman who is not confident. The 21st century is going to be unforgiving for the man or woman who will not be confident. It is the confident people in our midst who are going to make life worth living, who are going to achieve their goals, who are going to climb up the ladder of success, who are going to have the kind of downlines other people only talk about, dream about. And the question you ought to be asking here this afternoon in Nashville at this wonderful Opryland Hotel, this incredible starlight event is this. How do I become confident? How do I make sure I am confident? And the answer really is simple. The answer is really, really simple. You see, competence leads us to confidence. I'm not talking about the kind of confidence where it's just rah, rah, rah. You get excited, you holler and scream and stand and run and listen to motivational tapes and smile. All that is wonderful. I do it myself. But it's not enough. The kind of confidence that I'm speaking about, dear friends, is the kind of confidence that comes out of real stuff. Knowing your stuff and doing your stuff and doing it repeatedly so that your confidence really grows out of competence. Somehow when you're good at what you do, you feel confident in your life. Where does competence come from? It comes from knowledge. Don't ever miss one of these sessions. Don't ever pass a copy of the magazine that you don't read or a tape you don't listen to comes from skill. Seek the people who can teach you the ropes and learn them and learn them well. And it comes from experience. Doing it over and over and over again in the right way, at the right time, with the right people. Knowledge, skill, and experience leads you and me to competence. And competence leads you and me to confidence. And here's the clicker. Confidence would lead you and lead me to commitment. That's what we got to do. Make a commitment. In my book called Stairway to Success, I make this statement. And I think it's a clever statement. In fact, scratch that. I think it's embedded with wisdom. Because here's what the statement said. You make a decision with your brain. But you make a commitment with your heart. And then I will take it to another stage and to another stage. So as you stand up in just a moment, the only sound in this ballroom shall be my sound, just giving you instructions what to do next. Now you may stand up, make as much eye contact with as many people as you can, no words whatsoever, just make eye contact, pleasant, smiling faces. Wonderful. You should be able to make eye contact with a dozen people or so. Move around so you can do that. You've done a good job. Now what I want you to do is to meet as many people as you can around you. Just gently shake their hands. Tell them, hello, how are you? Try to do that. Go ahead. Okay, good job. Good job. Now then, now then what I want you to do is those same people you made eye contact with, those same people you shook their hands and told them, how are you? I want you to imagine these are your long lost friends. These are your childhood friends. You haven't seen them in years. Wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. And now you're going up to the airport or to the train station to meet them. Let them know you love them. Go for it. Very good job. Help me clap. That's it. And please be seated. Very good. <clears throat> it 
was nice when you made eye contact. Some of you were falling in love. <laughs> it was nice when you shook hands with others. But it was really, really good, wasn't it? Yeah. <laughs> well, sure, it's easy for you to say that you're sitting next to a good-looking dude. In fact, she, she's the one who begged me to do this exercise, you know. She's been writing me letters ever since Orlando. Do this exercise. Well, you know what happened the third time? We went beyond mere communication, beyond mere words. And what happened was we connected mind and soul and body. The essence of the process of effective communication rarely depends on words or merely eye contact. In fact, it exudes connectiveness. And you know how that feels. You know how it feels when you speak with someone and you walk away and you say, that person and I just sort of connected. There was something that pulled us together. I understood his wishes, his dreams, her aspirations, her fears, and he or she responded to me so magnificently, and we connected. And somehow when we connect with people, we no longer have to sell them anything or sell them on anything. Somehow when we connect with people, they sort of stand in line wanting to get what it is that you and I have in our life because they to want to feel that way. So really the magic is in our ability to connect, not just to communicate, to persuade, not just to sell. Now I'm going to work you through the workbook. This will be a work session. So if you have your workbook, you should now have it opened up to page number one. And page number one should be titled The Seven P's of Selling. And I hope that you will write some things down. Let me tell you why. The palest ink is better than the most remarkable memory. We remember ideas, but for a short period of time, you've got to write them down. I still use three by five cards. When I want to change a habit, learn an idea, I put it on a three by five card. I carry it with me for 21 days. I look at it 100 times a day. In 21 days, research shows that you and I can adopt new habits, and you and I can learn new stuff. So write it down. Here are the seven P's of selling. You and I may think of ourselves as salespeople, and indeed we are. Every person with whom you and I come in touch is a salesperson. They sell us on themselves, their ideas, their career, their family. Mothers are salespeople to their children. Husbands are salespeople to their spouses, and so on. So we're all salespeople. You really can't build a great starlight business if you don't understand the premise, the profound premise of how to get people to buy from you. Buy you first, buy your idea second, buy starlight products third, and then recruit other people and the process starts all over again. Seven P's of selling. Your power to persuade plenty of prospects to purchase your product at a never a price, heaven forbid, never a price. Anybody can sell anything for a price. This is America. America is built on profit, no profit, no beautiful stage. No profit hamburgers for lunch. No profit. We will not be in Upper Land. It'll be days in all the way. <laughs> Gotta have profit. Profit is a wonderful word. Your power to persuade plenty of prospects 
to purchase your product at a profit. And by that I mean not only to recruit enough people to come onto your team, but I also mean selling Starlight products ultimately at retail to customers. That's really what will build the business beyond imagination here border to border, coast to coast, and countries beyond. If there were an eighth P, by the way, to that definition, what might it be? Somebody guess. Yes, all these are good words. What? Very good. How about the word persistently? Does anything happen in this world if you don't really work at it persistently? Persistently, that's the key. If we're going to make something happen, we're going to make it happen day in, day out. I have a great sales manager friend of mine who lives in my home city of High Point, North Carolina, the furniture capital of the world, whereas I speak to you today, some 80,000 people have come to our city from over 70 countries around the world, furniture dealers and such, to see the new furniture so they can sell it to you. Anyway, in my home city of High Point, North Carolina, this great sales manager friend of mine gathers his salespeople every Monday morning, and he says, salespeople this morning and today, when you go out calling on prospects, I don't want you sticking your foot in the door. I want you to stick your head in the door. That way, if the customer slams the door on your neck, you can keep on talking. <laughs> and that's what I mean by persistence your power to persuade. Did you notice in that definition the word sell doesn't even exist? Did you notice that? Have you noticed that the greatest communicators in our world, the finest salespeople in our world, don't try to do something unto us? Instead, they invite us into their world with such persuasion that we want to buy what it is they have. You've got to live your life. You've got to walk the talk. You gotta have a smile on your face, a twinkle in your eye, you gotta use the product, you gotta sell it to enough customers, you gotta get enough testimonials, so that you really ultimately are working on your persuasion skills, not strictly on your selling skills. Now here's why people buy. There are four reasons why people buy, by the way, and I put the first word of each one of them in your blank there. The G stands for gain. We buy something because we want to gain something. I buy alert because I want to gain something to make me feel better in my life. The G stands for gain. The F stands for fear. Think of why people buy insurance, for example. I used to have a, an insurance a sales 